In this video, I'll focus on two things, creating a system and the design and layout of your system. And I've tried to make the design of my software as simple as possible for all locksmiths to use and understand, no matter what their computer skills are. So let's get started, and I'll show you some of the tools you'll have to create your systems and how you can access them. I'll start by clicking the New button up here. You'll notice the first tab here is the General Information tab. You'll notice I have other tabs across the top here uh, to organize all the cool options you'll have to work with. This helps keep it simple so you're not overwhelmed with features you don't want or don't understand. You can expose these features as you need to just by clicking the tab. So it's possible to create a great system just using this tab by choosing the lock manufacturer from the list, entering your master key, and choosing save. But let's take a closer look. The lock manufacturer list is a list of the most common locks and if I scroll through them, you'll notice that the default information over here changes. Now, these locks can be edited by you, or you can add new locks as needed. And if you notice, as I go through, when I get to a one-step system, I'll have an option here to eliminate all the change keys that use a number one master pin in them. This is really handy for the quick set systems that tend to wear out quite easily. And then over here, I have a job description, and then I have the master key field and a check button for the master key that can kind of check for some of the common errors that, that could occur. So that pretty much covers the general information tab. Uh, the next tab we have is, is the uh, customized tab. But let me go ahead and just enter some information here real quick so we'll have something over there to look at. And I'll go ahead and click the customized tab. And you'll notice that we have uh, plenty of tools here to customize your system. We have the rotation order. Uh, you can change the rotation, reverse it by clicking the buttons up here, or you can jump in here and change them around however you want. I have the master key displayed here, so you can see it in relationship to the key bidding array down below here. I have little preset buttons everywhere that you can click to hold chambers. You can reset so you can tinker around, and I have a couple preset buttons over here that will scramble up your key bidding array for you, if you notice, that so you don't end up with a key that's all like 01001 kind of mixes it up a little bit so that's that's pretty nice to do that and then you'll notice over here I have a rotating consonant tab that you can click on here and you can choose to rotate one two three or four chambers you can choose to use submasters if you want to and uh, use less master pins doing it so if you're not familiar with how the rotating consonant system works I have another video that will explain more about that so and then the next we have the customer notes tab where you can start customer notes and you can also uh, open and edit them from the view menu up here at any time. Then we'll move on to the ICC properties tab. If I was going to create an interchangeable core system, I would do it from here. I would choose the lock type that I wanted to do and go ahead and enter my control key. As you can see, I have several types to choose from here. And then the best Falcon format is also used by a few other manufacturers as well. So this really covers most of them. Then I have a tips tab over here that has a few tips that I thought might be helpful. So but let me go ahead and show you how it works here. We've entered all the information. I'm going to come back over to customize. I'll just reset it and click these two preset buttons that I have. And go ahead and click the save button. You'll notice it brings in the job description as a name. We can go ahead and use that or change it. We'll just use it. And then it's asking if I want to import the system now or later. I'll go ahead and import it. Okay, so that's how you create a system, some of the tools you'll have to work with, and the, the next step would be the design and the layout of your system. Now, when you're designing your system, there's two reports that can really help you lay it all out. They are the pinning report and the master key report. And normally, a five-pin, two-step system like the one I'm about to show you would have four groups, four. The four groups are A, B, C, and D, and within each of these four groups, you have four smaller groups. For example, the A group would have AA, AB, AC, and AD. And then each of these groups contain the change keys you'll have to work with. And of course, you'll have three more groups just like this one. So let's take a look at the pinning report for the first group. Clicking the A button will open the A group in the report editor, where you can add text, cut, copy, paste, highlights, color, and more, allowing you to create custom reports for your job. Now the first line here you'll see that you have the A master. This A master, if cut, will open everything that starts with an A. And in this case, that's everything in this window. 
Then the first change key of the group starts right here with the AA1, and it's going to go down to AA38, where you'll see the AA group master. Now this AA master will open all the change keys that start with AA. So again, that's AA1 through 38. Then as you go down, you'll notice that it goes to the AB group. And you can see that the AB group also has 38 usable change keys. Now, notice when we get to the end of the AB group, it jumps from AB to AD and is missing the AC group. This is because all the change keys in the AC group are unusable because they violate the max, or the maximum adjacent cut. If you're not familiar with the max violation is, it's when you have a shallow cut next to a deep cut, and the slope of the deep cut wipes out the landing of the shallow cut, making the pin rest on the slope and not the landing where it should be resting. This makes the key unusable. You can find out more about this in my Master Key Pro help under Basic Master Keying. But the default setting for this is to automatically hide the unusable change keys. You can change this though to allow it to show but mark unusable change keys if you prefer it that way. And I can show you how that works real fast. I'll go up here to settings, report options, and check it right here, and refresh my report. Okay, now you'll notice that I have some little marks here by the side of these which indicates that it violates the max. So the change keys with these marks would be hidden from your reports of your system. But the way it is now, it's going to you be able to view the full 64 maximum change keys that's mathematically possible for each group. So, and if you come down here, you'll notice that the AC group, all of them are marked out. So that's why you were missing the AC group. So let me go ahead and change that back, just so we're working with the keys that are usable. Here, here, and then I'll go ahead and refresh our report. So with some of the keys usable or hidden in each of the groups, how do you know how many usable change keys or masters you'll have to work with in each group? And that's where the master key report comes in. You can change the report type right here from this drop-down menu, so I'll choose master key, and then I'll click the A button to display a master key report of just the A group. And you'll notice over here the numbers to the right, that indicates the number of usable change keys that you're going to have for each submaster. If you remember back over here on the pinning report, we had 38 for this group and 38 for this group, and that's what it's that's what it's showing you over here. And this really helps you lay out your system. So let me give you a couple common but simple but common examples. Uh, let's say you're doing a job for a customer that wants a master key for the office area, and they want a master key for the shop area, and then they want, of course, a master key that's going to fit both of them. And let's also assume that they need 15 change keys for the office and 10 change keys for the shop area. Well, as you can see from this report, we could easily use the AA group for the office and the AB group for the shop area, or vice versa. And then we could cut this A master up here, and it's going to open up both groups. Or, of course, we could use the top master that we used to create the system that would open both groups as well. But now let's take the same scenario, and let's assume they need 40 change keys for the office area instead of the 15, and 10 keys for the shop area. You would need to reserve all of the A group for the office area, because you need more than 38 change keys. Now they could start, then you could start using the B group for the shop area. So let me just give you an idea what a full system would look like. I'll click the All button for the master key. And you can see that when I, that when I do that, I get all of the groups uh, available in the, in the system altogether. Uh, now what I'm showing you is a 5-pin system, so you're quite limited to the number of groups you'll have to work with compared to a 6-pin system. But this is a simple place to start for me to begin to explain to you how it works, and it'll make the six-pin system easier to understand when I show you. And so that's what I'll do now is I'll finish up and show you uh, some of the groups that you'll have for a six-pin system, uh, just so that you can kind of compare the two. So I'll go up here and open up oh, this one right here. I'll click the All button. And as you can see, we have several more. We have the A master that's going to open everything that starts with an A down to here. Then we have the AA master that's going to open up all of these right in here. Then we have the AB, we have AC, and then it's going to go down to the B groups, and you'll have the same four groups, A, B, C, and D. There's one more thing I should explain before I go, and that is your pinning reports here is what you're going to be using to pin up your locks. And when you print this out, it's self-explanatory. you got your key ID here, your key cuts, your bottom pins, and your master pins. Uh, this is what I call an inline pinning. It saves paper because you have just one change key per line. 
but you can also go ahead and choose from the view menu to show stacked pinning for your report editor and that gives you oops let me change that back to a the other system here we'll change it back to pinning and we'll go ahead and actually change it back to the test by pin tips test system we were doing there and you'll see that we have the stacked format as well that shows the bottom pins and the master pins stacked on top of each other so I hope that helps you understand a little more about Master Key Pro and how it can help save you a lot of time and a lot of frustration possibly on your next Master Keying job. So thank you.